Alright, uh, which of the following prevents database, uh, data, which of the following prevents data, uh, you know what, I, I've been like having a few drinks in the evening when I make these videos, and I'm having this drink right now, it's called a Voodoo Ranger Fruit Force, Fruit Punch IPA, I, I don't usually not a big fan of IPAs, I usually, just, frankly I'm just a Budweiser guy myself. But I threw a party over the weekend and I uh, went beer shopping because not everybody likes Budweiser's and they all got to be all fancy drinking like craft beers or something like that. So I had to get this. I got this Voodoo Ranger IPA and I only got it because my six-year-old son was like, you got to get that because he liked the little little skeleton pilot in the front. So I have a drink of that. It's not really that bad. It's not that bad. Probably not a good idea making CSV practice questions while drinking beer, but you know what? I've done that in basically a lot of my videos in my CSP course and uh, you know what I'm not gonna stop now cuz uh, what who's gonna stop me no one that's who anyway which of the following prevents database inference attacks is it choice a data masking is it choice B poly instantiation Ooh, that's a tough word to say when you've been drinking is it choice B poly instan instantiation okay is it that is it choice C, tokenization, or is it choice D, database views? Um, should I give you the answer right away, or do you want me to wait until the end? Um, I'm not gonna give you the answer right away. Let's just let me just explain a few things, and then we'll then we'll, then I'll tell you the correct answer. But first, let me take a sip real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mmm, fruit punchy plus IPA. Okay, first we must define the term inference. It means the ability to derive some type of information without directly reading about it. Instead, other bits of lower level information are aggregated together to guess the higher level information. And for those of you who did not do well in college or high school, aggregating means coming together, putting things together from smaller bits of little pieces. Okay, we don't want that. We don't want everybody taking little bits of information from various sources and then coming to the conclusion of something bigger. Uh, we don't want that when it comes to database security. In the Sean Harris book from a long time ago, she had a good example. She said, um, aggregation, if some, think of it this way. In 1990, if someone were to stand outside the Pentagon at night and look at all the pizza delivery guys coming in, they would know that something is going on. Like people are staying overnight at the Pentagon and ordering pizzas, meaning they're eating dinner and figuring stuff out. And what they were figuring out at that time is that they were planning the Desert Storm, the Desert Storm War. So they were by using the fact that pizzas were delivered to the Pentagon, they were aggregating this information to come to a conclusion that something big is going to happen. So how do we how do we solve this problem? How do we solve the problem of aggregating information to come up with a secret that you shouldn't be knowing? By using poly instantiation which means to assign different values to the same objects within the same database. It's like creating two lower level versions of the same object, which makes it more difficult to aggregate the final version. If you didn't understand that, well, you gotta understand that. Not everything can be simplified in the CSSP. Sometimes you just gotta learn the hard topics. You just gotta learn it the hard way. You can't just distill everything to a pure fine alcoholic brew like an IPA. <laughs> Okay, you got to know the difference between poly instantiation and uh, what's that? What's that other word? It's uh, poly poly uh, po polymorphism. You got to know the difference between those two. Okay. Um, well, okay. The correct answer is B. The correct answer is B. Uh, which of the following prevents database inference attacks? Choice B. Poly instantiation. The answer is not tokenization because first of all, that deals more with payment processing online and data in motion. Poly instantiation and databases are data at rest. So while this practice question is mentioning tokenization, but it's, it's specifically asking about databases. If you knew just this, then you could have eliminated choice C right away. Tokenization is when the original data, say like a credit card number, is represented in transit or in motion by a token. This token, or the value that this token represents, is sensitive data, like the original data. A and in no way can anyone who sees this token, can they derive what the original data is. It's like, imagine your data is like, you know, uh, your, your social security number. But the token that represents your social security number is like the picture of a ball or something like that. 
How would anyone know that that picture of a ball represents the numbers of your social security number? They can't. It's impossible. That's tokenization. The token represents something about the original data without representing anything about the original data. Oh boy, this, this video is already five minutes long. These quick question CSV practice question videos are like usually two or one minute. Then again, I'm not usually drinking during them. It's not choice A, data masking, which is like kind of hiding the sensitive parts of the data, but still keeping its original structure. Examples of data masking include moving details around or scrambling sensitive parts of a data set, or, you know, or just encrypting the data. That's all. Encrypting is also data masking. Data masking isn't a specific technology or process, but more of a description of different types of ways to change data. Okay, it's like a category of how to change data. And it's not choice D, database views, because that is restricting a user to view a certain part of the database without revealing all of it. So only two choices could have really been the answer as they deal specifically with databases, choice B or choice D. With choice B, being the best choice and the correct answer? It's a tough question. Don't worry if you got it wrong or correct. If you got it correct, it doesn't mean you're ready for the CSP exam. And if you got it wrong, it doesn't mean you're not ready for the CSP exam. The important thing is to know why the correct choice is, is the right choice and why the other choices are incorrect. Okay, all the best on your CSP exam, guys. I drink this beer for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're not gonna find any other CSP instructors out there drinking beer while making videos because, uh, you know, nobody's the boss of me. Nobody can really tell me what to do. I'm in this on my own. I came into the CSP game and said, I'm gonna be a CSP instructor. I'm not gonna be like anybody else and uh, nobody can tell me what to do. And they don't. And they can't because uh, I wrote a CSP book, which is like the top six books of CSP books of all time, right? What are you gonna say to me? Nothing. I'm like ruling this space. I'm ruling this industry in the cis in the cis world. You say cis, you know Luca Med. That's it. All right. All the best on your exam.